Yeah, awesome. Uh, my name is Dan. I am a Microsoft Con 365 consultant based in Denmark. Um, I come from a dev background. Uh, I do a little bit of consulting, a little bit of dev work. Um, I have a blog that's over at blog.dansoft.dk. Uh, and I'm active over in that new social media thing called X, uh, where I'm at 10 Dan. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions uh, regarding what you're going to see today. Um, so I figured that I should start off by covering what is the, the problem I'm trying to, to resolve with this sample. Um, so I often run into clients who need a, um, they need some kind of form to gather in information that their employees are filling out. And the SharePoint list or Microsoft lists are, it's a great way to do that, but it doesn't, doesn't always like build a, like full experience where the form is neatly organized the way they want it. Um, you can do some things with your formatting, uh, especially if you're Chris Kent, you, you can definitely do something. Um, but it's just not as intuitive for the end user to set up these forms. Um, so I wanted to build a solution where they don't have to worry about how they're going to gather the data. They just have to build the form. Um, and then I discussed it with my boss who said, you, you can't do that. That would take months to build, which um, for anyone who knows me is the best way to get me to, to spend three nights uh, working on something, doing it. Uh, so uh, I got to coding. Um, as I was building the solution, uh, the Microsoft 365 conference uh, went ahead and uh, Microsoft actually announced that they were going to be doing something. So I thought I'd bring that in here just, just for show. This isn't my stuff. This is what Microsoft announced. Um, but I thought it was pretty neat um, and it looks a lot more sleek than the stuff I built. Uh, so I figured I would have that in there as well. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's there are blog posts somewhere. Uh, I could probably tell that in the chat afterwards to the, uh, the thing that Microsoft said around this thing. Um, but I figured we should uh, just go right ahead and uh, go into the demo of uh, what it is that I built, the, what it does. So I don't know if you can see the window I just dragged on top there. Yep, shows up. Yeah, awesome, perfect. Uh, so this is essentially the like the concept. So we have this form that we can uh, we can fill that out. Um, I can go around and do stuff here. It will uh, show a new field if I say yes to this one. Uh, that sort of stuff. Um, if you set a bunch of things, it will uh, it's able to to like dynamically change the form a little bit. Uh, and if I fill out everything here, we can go ahead and do that. I can submit the form. Right now, there's an alert. Don't worry about that. That's from my debugging earlier that I didn't remove for, before I published. Um, and it will create a link, uh, which includes the actual response, which means I can share this link. Um, and others are able to like see the same thing. They can see the response. Um, now that that's pretty cool in and of itself, but I mean, this is just a static form that isn't that cool. So what I think is really cool about this, if I go in here on a blank SharePoint page, we can go ahead and we can insert the form. And this is where stuff gets cool. Um, so we choose a document library. I said list, it's a document library uh, where we want our responses to be stored for now. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to click here. We can add different types of fields. Uh, we'll do a few of these. We can make a group which can contain several fields. So we could do the, the classic like first name and a last name, just for some like basic stuff here. Um, then we can go ahead and we can add another field that could be conditional and it could say if your first name is Dan, we want to do something inside of this. So this is a design sort of inspired by what we know from like Power Automate or logic apps where you, you can see there's a border around just sort of limiting like what we can see. Um, so we could do something like this. And we can essentially just keep going here, uh, build out this thing. There's conditional fields, groups, uh, there's multi choice, bunch of fields that we know from like SharePoint already. Uh, we could go like this, hit save. Uh, and publish that. And there we go. Now we have a form. And if I enter my name as Dan, we'll see that that label thing appears because that's conditionally based on that name. Uh, we can fill this form out and it works just the same. Um, and there we go. Uh, now, something that I thought was pretty cool about this that we don't get with Microsoft lists is we can save this URL now 
uh, I'll add another tab just so we have it. We can go back in here uh, to the, uh, the like plain form. We can change the form. Uh, let's go ahead and add another field uh, that could just be a number. How old are you? Um, save that. And that's now here, but if we go back to the other thing, so this is the, the form that was submitted earlier and refresh that, it will still remember what the form looked like at that time. Uh, so this is done in a way where I actually save like the schema for the form as well as your response uh, so that we can make sure that we can show exactly what was happening when you filled out the form initially. Um, let's take a look at like how the responses are stored. Currently, that is a bit of a hacky way, and I'm not not quite happy with it, but it works. So I'm essentially just generating a JSON file and I'm dumping that in the document library. Um, here we can see the, the schema for the fields, which is simply just some like made up schema that I came up with, where each field has an ID that is uh, essentially like the field's internal name mapping to, to somewhere else. So this is a field group that doesn't have, use anything, but if we take this one, which is the first name, we can see that down here, the response was Dan. And we can see that there's a lookup field for, for that in the conditional field and the match value is then. So this is just really basic like JSON schema structure to, to generate the like how this the form should look in the end. Um, and then because I store everything together, that makes me able to, to display the form exactly as it was at the time. Um, yeah. So let's close the demo down. Um, and move on to talk about which like field types. We saw that earlier too, and actually Daniel had a similar enum in his solution earlier we saw, uh, but essentially I just chose like the fields that made sense to me. You could you could go in and you could add something like lookup fields. I know there are people in the GitHub repository now who's, that are looking into adding like, user fields and lookup fields. Um, I wanted my first version to be I don't want to say SharePoint less, but I wanted it to be something that essentially could function outside of SharePoint. Uh, right now, the only like real connection there is that I use PNPJS to store it into a document library. You could call any API with that data and store it somewhere else. Um, yeah. Let's move along and look at some code. Um, I will go ahead and I will open up a Visual Studio Code over here. So I'm trying this thing called code chore for the first time, so, so bear with me here. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you is React hooks, which is something I've been playing more and more with and I really like. Um, so I built a hook that I called use object that is like a generic hook. Uh, and essentially what this allows me to do is when I'm setting the state, so it's the good old, like in, if you're building class components, you use set state. Every time you have to do that for an object, you have to do the spread operator first. And I'm essentially doing that like packaged away here. Uh, so whenever I'm changing something in my state, I can simply say change. And then this is the, the field ID or the field value that I, the value on my object that I want to change and the new value. Um, I do a bit more zoom here just, just in case. Um, so that's something that I really like about using these uh, React hooks. Uh, this was one of the first projects where I really like put it to use and like tried to, forcing myself to do it. Um, Oh, that's just a, a little like thing that I thought was pretty neat as I was looking over the code. So the entire rendering of the uh, form when it is in like build mode is less than 100 lines of code. When I started working on this project, I was imagining it like, I guess, being several thousand lines of code. Uh, so I was quite surprised when I looked over it and saw that it was 97 lines of code. Um, so the internal names here, uh, we talked about those earlier that are like mapping. They are a random ID. Uh, from the property pane of the solution, you can actually edit the whole schema. So you could give the, those IDs that you want yourself if you needed it for a API you're developing yourself. Um, or if you wanted two fields to edit the same value, you could go ahead and, and edit that in the JSON schema and, and you'd be off to the races. Um, the next thing that I've played with in the solutions that I really liked is the uh, the context API. Uh, this is something that I've been using for for a little bit, but I don't see a lot of people using it. And I thought I'd, I'd shout it out just just like how cool this is. So essentially, you, you create a context like you would create any other React element, 
Uh, I'm creating this at the root, and I'm giving it my uh, my web part context and a provider that I'm building. Um, and because if children is my uh, my form, then anywhere in like the uh, the component hierarchy from here on and down, I'll be able to use that thing. So I can just go ahead and I can. Uh, oh, that's where that goes. I can go ahead and I can say a React use context here, um, and then I can get the provider. And that's available for me, and I could do this 50 components down, uh, essentially saving me from that that classic prop drilling we sometimes see in solutions that are are based on class components, where you're passing a prop like the entire way down just to to, to get it available at, at the root. Um, especially if you're using the uh, NP React reusable controls, a lot of those want your your context, uh, which you might not have passed through all your other components. This is an easy way to like share that down. Um, yeah, uh, and there's the usage of it because uh, I extracted it up here. Uh, and then another thing I wanted to shout out that I don't use that often and I thought was pretty cool in this way is the uh, display mode property that is from your, um, it's available in your like web part file. Uh, you can see which kind of mode the, the page is in, which is how I do the switching up when you publish the page, it's displayed in one way and when you go ahead and edit it, it's displayed in another way. Um, that's that's about it for what I wanted to call out in the code. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll be around in the chat to to answer those as well. Um, oh, that went back a page. Um, yeah. Uh, then I just wanted to round out my my presentation with a few things that I thought might be cool to add uh, later to to the solution. Or if you feel like it, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, so the first one is I wanted it to be able to uh, create a SharePoint list and set up the fields uh, instead of doing a JSON file somewhere. Uh, that sounds like the Daniel solution from earlier might actually be a great way to do that because um, you could provision those like lists really easily. Uh, I'll look up user fields. Uh, Michaela over on GitHub said that she would look into that. Uh, I don't know if she's, she's gotten around to it yet, um, but it would be it would be pretty neat um, to do. Uh, another thing is right now the fields are stuck in the order you put, you put them in there. Uh, they are you are unable to move them later, uh, which is a bit annoying. Um, but I figured that it would be a would be really awesome like to be able to drag and drop those around like you can with, for instance, the Quick Link web part. Um, and required fields. Right now I don't have any validation that you've actually filled out the fields you're doing when you're like submitting the form. Uh, that's something that would make a lot of sense. So you could could force people to at least fill out some of the fields, um, but I also haven't gotten around to that. Um, yeah, and uh, then that's about it. Uh, again, my name is Santoft. You can find me over on on X or uh, or elsewhere. Uh, I'm on most of the socials. Um, yeah, thank you for for listening to what I had to say. Uh, I'll share some links in the chat. Uh, first one being that uh, Microsoft like a, uh, the blog post about the list updates, link to the sample, and a link to where you can find these slides after this uh, session is done. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for, for listening to what I have to say. Mm -hmm.